Richard. Richard K., thank you very much. I would like to make a toast for the $500 uh, referral that uh, you've helped me earn for uh, getting a, a Glowforge for my local makerspace. So I am in the manner that a uh, Glowforge user will do, I suppose. Going to, oh, that's not a good piece. Let me see if I can get a better piece. Something with a little more consistency in the, uh, there we go. This one looks good. Eh, that'll, that'll do. So, I'm going to engrave my feeling of gratitude into some bread as a literal toast. Let's see. I have never done this before. I've never used food in my Glowforge, so this is a learning experiment for me as well. And move this down just a little bit so it's been a better view of the camera. Alright, so I'm going to uh, upload the design that I made. Resizing it appropriately for the bread. chosen the settings for basswood and I think I've made the uh, I've made the focus height of the lens about about half an inch which I think is about right if this looks like it's made a little over a half an inch but uh, the the glowforge won't let you won't let you uh, basically do anything more than a half an inch without taking out the crumb tray and I'm, I'm literally going to need the crumb tray for this I think so uh, I'm just gonna kind of wing it and uh, we'll see what happens I'm going to actually zoom the camera in so we can better see what it's doing to the bread. Hmm. So now we're preparing the design. This actually comes a day, a day after or so uh, the Glowforge announcement of some of the improvements to uh, that they've recently made, such as the ability to pause, uh, a pause an engraving mid. So I might test that with this thank you. And also, uh, apparently it's supposed to be faster with regards to preparing the design, about 30% faster. So uh, I'm waiting for it to still prepare the design and be able to, to, to engrave it. I'm hoping that the, cho the settings I've chosen for bread are, uh, are accurate, but if we end up burning the bread, then so be it. I am prepared with a water bottle if I need to put out a fire. But I'm still waiting for it to prepare. But yeah, basically, uh, thank you very much for, for using my referral code to buy to buy yourself a Glowforge Pro. Uh, as as you know, that basically saved you five hundred dollars, and uh, it's gonna you know give me another five hundred dollars credit, or actually even a little more than that in the in the Glowforge shop and. My plan is to use uh, the the money that I collect from referrals to buy my to buy a Glowforge for my local makerspace, which right now has uh, a functional but aging laser cutter, and I think that I think a, a Glowforge would make an excellent addition to the makerspace's offerings, uh, because a lot of people seem to uh, come to the makerspace with an interest in in learning to use or using the laser cutter. And uh, I think the Glowforge is just, the workflow in the Glowforge is so much better than the one that we already have. Um, that even if the other one has a few extra features or bells and whistles, um, I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy using the Glowforge. So I'm really looking forward to just sharing it with them. Uh, and I just really like, you know, I, I bought it for myself just to use. And the fact that, you know, the referrals that I'm generating could potentially get one for my makerspace too. I just, I think that, that tickles me. I think that's great. I am still waiting for it to prepare this design though, and the design's not terribly, oh, here we go. All right, so I am progressing, and maybe halfway through, I'm gonna try pausing it just to see what happens, so. I 
I just, uh, I, I'm making a wide angle view real quick just so you see I just press the button. Oh, we're, I think we're getting some good toasting. Yeah, that's some literal toasting. I can see the smoke and it, I see the bread toasting. I don't know how often people would toast bread with a laser, but the fact that I am 41 years old and, and able to use a 40 watt or 45 watt laser to toast bread, I, I am very, very pleased with this. Let me uh, zoom in a little more. So you can better see the uh, what I'm seeing. Honestly, it looks like I mean it's gonna burn it. I mean I see I see it making an, an impact, but with the with the consistency of the bread, I don't know if it's gonna be particularly legible or not because it looks like it's a pretty light toast. Like I can see it definitely changing the color of the surface of the bread, and I'm using I'm using basically eighty percent engraved power and a hundred percent speed so I'm thinking that if I were going to do this over I probably would uh, turn the power up all the way or maybe turn the speed down to something like I don't know maybe 60 percent I might just run it again to see what the result would be to that because this is my first time ever doing any kind of bread or food and I don't really plan on eating this obviously because I've been using it with other materials but, uh, you know, I think you get the point of the gesture. I'm going to probably stop talking now so I can, I can just time lapse this and uh, speed up the process so that you don't have to sit through the whole process of it engraving because it looks like the job says it's going to take another 12 minutes. So I'm going to record it all, but I'm just going to speed it up so that you can see the results after 12 minutes. And so thank you very much again. So I'm going to take a sec, hmm, actually let me wait until it's finished to zoom in. <coughs> so I'm going to uh, briefly try pausing it, and you'll see me press the pause button just to see what happens. So far as nothing, nothing has happened. I, I did press the pause button, but it looks like it's still engraving. I'm going to try holding it in. Yeah, I'm not seeing an effect. Maybe, maybe it has to download some kind of update to the machine or something like that. I don't really know, but so far... It doesn't seem like the button is actually stopping anything. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll figure it out later, but yeah. So at least that's something. Um, I'm going to let it finish up and I'm going to try running it again at a higher power and slower speed to see if I can make it, because I can definitely see it's doing a job, the, the, the modeling of the bread or the, the holes in the bread surface make it kind of hard to see. And so I think that having a darker engrave will work better. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Alright, so I'm going to zoom in real quick on the bread. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's clearly different than it was before. You can kind of see the engraving. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give it another shot at a higher power and see if it helps. So, I'm going to go back to a wide angle view. I'm going to make some cutting changes here real quick without moving anything.
right, so what I've done is I've uh, I've turned the power of it up from I think it was at 80, and I've gone instead of going to 100, I've gone to full power, which is kind of like that extra bit beyond 100, just uses the full power of the laser. So I don't know exactly what effect that'll have, but it's I've turned the power up hopefully significantly, and I've also decreased the speed from 1,000 to 700. So it's about 70% of the speed that it was at before, and now I'm just waiting for it to prepare. Once it prepares it, uh, then I will just start it again, go back to the time lapse so you can kind of see what happens uh, with these new settings, and hopefully it'll be legible after this engraving. Alright, looks like it is set. Uh, I just checked the, the Glowforge notification of the, uh, the, the, the improvements that they've made and I just saw the language that they are actually going to be rolling out the improvements as updates to the machines over the next week or so, which makes sense of why I couldn't actually uh, pause the engraving when I tried. So sometime soon I'll be able to, but not right now. Uh, so I'm just going to start. This looks like it's going to take about 16 minutes. Uh, hopefully it doesn't do any fires uh, or that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I'll just uh, zoom in on the bread again so that we can time lapse it and see the progress. So, here we go. Yeah, I can definitely see more of a, an effect there. Definitely a lot more smoke coming from it. Nothing on fire yet though, so. If it's ever going to be legible, this will be this will be how I'll be able to do it. Otherwise, the bread's just a, a bad surface for engraving. Oh, I can smell it too. It smells good. All right, well, uh, it looks like it was more or less, it, it's a little more legible now than it was before, that's definitely true. Um, because of the surface of the bread, I don't think it's a really good surface for, for engraving on, uh, for obvious reasons. But uh, I'm going to take it out and show you, uh, and again, thank you very much for buying a Glowforge Pro with my referral code. But yeah, it's one of the side effects that I often find from uh, from working with the Glowforge is that there's a, just a little bit of inaccuracy between the camera and what it's telling you it's going to engrave onto the image and the actual image. So this kind of work is a little difficult to do sometimes. I think it did a pretty good job. It's, it's almost where I thought it was going to be, but it's just slightly off in terms of uh, it looks like it's a little larger over here. Uh, than, than it looked like on the interface over there. I can, uh, let me see if I'll actually bring the camera over there and show you guys what it looked like. Um, let me just detach it here. So, uh, that's Adobe Illustrator um, where I, you know, kind of made the the image. This is what it was kind of supposed to look like. And 
Legends, this is what Glowforge was telling me it was going to look like over the bread. I thought I'd position that pretty well, but the actual reality was, let me back out a little bit, it looks like it was A little like it looks like the actual engraving was a little bit larger than what it than what the Glowforge app said it was going to be, and that's just been like my general experience. Is if I'm if I'm going to be engraving something on a surface, I kind of have to make sure that it's uh, either I do a draft and position it afterwards, or uh, just undersize a little based on the interface, and uh, you know do it that way. Because if I if I try to size it just right, usually it ends up just a little bit too big. Uh, or off or something like that. So, anyways, uh, thank you again, Richard, for excellent referral and uh, happy glow forging. I know you're going to enjoy your pro, and uh, I'm hoping that I can get a few more referrals just like yours, so that my makerspace can enjoy glow forge as well. Right on. I think that is it for now. So, yeah, take care and happy glow forging.